it's the Friday night favourite, the dish you can eat without using a knife and fork. And it's Britain's most loved and most popular takeaway. It's fish and chips. But did you know? It was at the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign that fried fish began being sold as leftovers to the working classes at London's Billingsgate Market. Alexis Sawyer, the celebrity chef of the time, used to eat it with his fingers on the way home from work. When Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist said, ''Please, sir, can I have some more?'' he could easily have been referring to our favourite dish. Dickens mentions a fried fish warehouse in Oliver Twist. During this time, fish would be served with either bread or baked potatoes. It's a north-south divide. Debate and counterclaim surrounds the answer to the question, who opened the first fish and chip shop? Some say it was Jewish immigrant Joseph Malin, who opened one in Cleveland Street in East London. Others say it was entrepreneur John Lees, who sold fish and chips out of a wooden hut at Mossley Market in Lancashire. Fish and chips became popular as a late-night post-pub feast for men before becoming the time-saving midday meal of factory and foundry workers, as well as a payday treat for families at the end of the working week. Four pence in today's money is what it would have cost you to sit down at the first fish and chip restaurant owned by Sam Isaacs in Whitechapel in London and be served bread and butter and tea with your fish and chips. By 1910, there were around 25,000 fish and chip shops in Britain. Did fish and chips help to win the First World War? It was seen as a hot, tasty and morale-boosting meal. Prime Minister Lloyd George's war cabinet recognised its importance and because of this safeguarded supplies and kept prices low. In the interwar years, two-thirds of the British wet fish caught were used to supply the growing fish and chip industry. The number of fish and chip shops reached its peak at 35,000. Author George Orwell wrote in The Road to Wigan Pier that fish and chips were first among home comforts and kept the masses happy. At this time, there was a fish and chip shop on the corner of most streets in the UK and the dish was becoming a firm favourite for seaside day-trippers and holidaymakers. During the Second World War, ministers made sure that fish and chips were one of the few foods that weren't rationed. Meanwhile, the deep-sea trawling industry also played a key part during wartime as experienced seamen were highly sought after by the Navy. Curry and spice and all things nice, including fish and chips. During the revolution and social change in the 1960s, takeaway food blended as Chinese and Asian restaurants put their own version of fish and chips on the menu. Wrapped in the day's newspaper, that's how people before the 80s enjoyed their takeaway fish and chips. This ended when it was ruled unsafe for the food to come into contact with newspaper ink. The first Fish and Chip Awards, organised to honour the tastiest and the best in the industry, took place in London. Seven million portions of fish and chips are consumed every week in the UK. 380 million portions a year. There are eight fish and chip shops to every McDonald's restaurant in the UK, and now the dish has gone global. It's a favourite around the world and a must-have on the bucket list for visitors to the UK.